where did you find your inspiration for the stamp and coin issue and were you influenced by other artists? Um, I was influenced by Fasa Amor and Sa Amor alone and also Aotearoa and I think those two elements, those artistic elements are actually been the pinnacle to actually starting off that conversation and the misunderstanding between Fasa Amor and Fia Parangi. So those two cultures have been the two things that have inspired me. So trying to create something that actually comes just a vehicle to create conversation like what does this mean, and what's the symbolism behind that. I think that was just the given and I think those things are just, they're just props or vehicles for us to have a conversation. Can you take us through the elements and the stamps and the coin and yep. how, what, why you decided to use those different elements in the design? I think the first inspiration was actually from, especially these postcards and if you see in the postcards you see these uh, little uh, combs, these wooden combs, these wafer combs and that was the fretwork that I was actually really blown away with. And then so basically I did a contemporary version of it, of a church, a really significant church in Samoa. This one here in up here, you'll see it in every photograph, but it doesn't, no longer does it exist, but there's a new church going up. And so what I wanted to do was just go through and actually just try to look at the architecture, the custom, um, the agriculture. And those things were, for me were actually really important from what I see as a New Zealand born salmon, but what I've learned from my nana and granddad and going over there backwards and forwards. And so I thought the metaphor was actually quite funny, especially when you talk about um, combing for the history. Just little things, because that's how we speak our language in metaphors. So using like the better, you know, with the three characters here, with the twinga, um, you know, with the nu, these two coconuts here, uh, with the church, because church is a really vital part of the structure of actually holding the whole fa uh, family together. Um, it's basically where it's a the community sharing a, a same thought and then also with these little bits off the side here, uh, that was part of that, uh, like a contemporary version of the Tawinga. Like at Mulinu, this building up here is no longer at Mulinu. That was our very first uh, government house. And then I put the beehive underneath it for obvious reasons, you know, like sh the shared governance. Um, the one in the middle is, is quite comical, but at the same time, it's serious. It's from the German period. Um, when you fly into Samoa during the day, what you'll see is all these coconut trees and they're all perfectly straight and that's the, the German plantations there. A lot of people say that that German, that German side has actually disappeared, I disagree. We still consume and eat the food like the koko and the uh, nu or the coconut but the coconut tree or the nu is actually just as important as part of our ritual and as far as, as like as part of our culture. The courthouse over here, that's a trilogy which New Zealand and Samoa and Germany actually share uh, this space here. The building still stands today. And the reason why I spent so much time on the architecture because they're actual visual diaries or visual histories of ourselves and our personality. The other thing was the uh, Ubeti block, which is basically the rubbing. You'll see one, the one up here, over here, as you can see in the background. Now these drops are really important and the siapu, or the tapa cloth, has a huge significance. Uh, with Aotearoa, this pre-contact and contact. And basically, it's the tapa cloth is actually has a huge significant cultural significance because it's the first thing you're born into. This is old school. And then when you leave this world, that's the thing you leave out on, in the, on, the, tapa, on the tapa, or what we call siapu. So having these siapu drops in the background was actually really important for myself. And so with the coin you combined all the aspects of the stamps and combined them into one to give an overall view, yeah. was that right? Yeah, yeah, the elements. Yeah. And, it was, um, and that was a print that I produced at the 25th anniversary in Samoa, as you can see. And this one here was really important because it was, um, I went to Samoa on my own account basically because I wanted to actually part of that anniversary at that time and I was still at art school so I managed to wangle my way back to Samoa and stay there for three months and then produced a whole series of works responding to what was going on at the time, the significant history between you know, Samoa's independence and that's actually when I started learning the history about New Zealand, Germany and Samoa itself through just this, this actual print itself and all the symbolism behind it is actually really significant because 
this is the update version of where we are now and what I've learned. There's still heads to learn, but there's a lot of symbolism in the actual coin. It means a, um, means a lot to me, and especially the, the other bowl or the cover bowl, who was talking about that ceremony, mm -hmm. where romantically it used to be the village version that prepared the other. Now, some other islands, like especially in Melanesia, they still do it, their customs, so their customs come a long way especially in Samoa, and the other bowl was actually the centre point of the whole con creating the conversation. Um, this one here with the iokonga, with the fine mats, that's your, like your whakapapa or your, um, it's from a family, and when it's woven, the story is woven into it. So the significance of this is talking about the binding of the actual family itself, how all the families are woven in together. Um, the whole idea with the bear, this is the top, this is the male uh, front of the bear, or, and this is the back of it here, the Samoan Tatao. Now that's one ritual that almost died out, um, but it came back really strongly here in Aotearoa. It was revived again uh, by the Suwapi. There's a, a really famous family there that's revived the, the Tatao. The other elements here with the church, for me, there's 2,000 churches in Samoa, so you've got a choice which congregation or what religion or what gives you your yeah, what community you want to be part of. But why I wanted to acknowledge the church is because of all these beautiful architectural buildings that have been put together right from the late 1800s right till now. And again, back to Morinu, the, the government, where the flag raising was when we got independence, the anniversary, because that flag is really important. Again, the whole flag raising idea is like, yeah, it has finally given us that independence but then also the significance of the uh, flag raising. Also the architecture, especially the architecture of the Samoan Whare, again, a significant uh, shape and form just from Samoa, how it's architecturally, the whole building's put together. But not only that, is where actually where your seating is or where your placement is within that context with the Matai system. So that's why I'm so glad we're still playing with that whole form. And then, um, the, especially this courthouse, Again, we share that history between Aotearoa and Samoa and Germany. It's a, it's a, it's a tri relationship, so we've all been part of this history. So it's that's again a significant building that's part of us. And the plantations again, plays the agricultural side of things between New Zealand and Samoa. Again, there was a, they played a major role in that as well.